Welcome to Pareto Code. What if I told you that the goal of this channel isn't just to teach you how to write code? The real goal, the central theme of everything we're going to do here, is to learn how to solve problems. So let's start with the basics. What exactly is programming? In simple terms, programming means creating software. And software is just a set of instructions that tells a computer what to do. Software is absolutely everywhere, even in places you might not expect. Of course, you know it's on your personal computer. You use word processors, web browsers, and email programs every day. But software also plays a critical role in running airplanes, cars, and our cell phones. It might even be running in your toaster. Developers create all of this incredible software using powerful tools called programming languages. Now, there are many, many programming languages out there, and it's natural to wonder, which one is the best? The honest truth is, there is no best language. Think of it like a toolbox. Each language has its own strengths and weaknesses. An experienced programmer knows that one language might be perfect for one situation, while a different language is more appropriate for another. That's why seasoned developers try to master as many languages as they can. And that brings us back to the most important point. If you learn how to think like a programmer using just one language, you'll find it so much easier to pick up others later on. The key is to learn how to solve problems using a programming approach. To begin that exciting journey, we first need to understand the tool we'll be using, the computer itself. At its core, a computer is an electronic device that stores and processes data. And every computer is made of two fundamental parts, hardware and software. Hardware is the physical stuff you can see and touch. Software is the invisible set of instructions that controls the hardware. Let's take a quick tour of the major hardware components. First up, the most important part, the central processing unit, the CPU. The CPU is the brain of the computer. Its job is to retrieve instructions from memory and execute them. It handles all the thinking, the math, and the logic. The speed of a CPU is measured in gigahertz, which means billions of instructions per second. Modern CPUs also have multiple cores, which is like having several brains working together to get things done faster. Next, how does a computer actually store information? This is where we talk about bits and bytes. At its most basic level, a computer is just a collection of billions of tiny electronic switches that can be either on or off. That's it. We represent on with a one and off with a zero. These are called bits. A group of eight bits is called a byte. Every single piece of data on your computer is stored as a series of these bytes. So where do these bytes live? The first place is memory, also known as RAM. You can think of memory as the computer's short-term work area. When you run a program, it gets loaded into memory because the CPU can access it there incredibly quickly. The key thing to remember about RAM is that it's volatile. That means when you turn the power off, everything in memory is lost. So for permanent storage, we need storage devices. Programs and data are permanently kept on storage devices. This includes your hard disk drive, a USB flash drive, or increasingly, cloud storage. When you open a file, it's copied from your storage device into that fast, temporary memory for the CPU to work with. Finally, we have input, output, and communication devices. Input devices, like your keyboard and mouse, let you send information to the computer. Output devices, like your monitor, let the computer send information back to you. And communication devices, like a Wi-Fi card, let your computer talk to other computers over a network. So that's the hardware, the physical machine. But how do we, as humans, actually give it instructions? We use programming languages. At the lowest level, you have machine language. This is the computer's true native language, made up entirely of ones and zeros. It's incredibly tedious and nearly impossible for a human to write directly. So programmers created assembly language. Assembly was a huge step up. It uses short words called mnemonics to represent machine code instructions. It's easier to read, but it's still very close to the hardware and requires a program called an assembler to translate it into machine language. We call these low-level languages. The real breakthrough was the creation of high-level languages. This is what most programmers use today. Languages like Java, Python, or C++. They are called high-level 
because they are much closer to human language and are designed to be easy to learn and use. The code you write is called source code, but a computer can't run source code directly. It must be translated into machine code first, using either an interpreter, which translates and runs your code one line at a time, or a compiler, which translates the entire program all at once into an executable file. So we have our hardware, and we have high-level languages to write our software. But what's the crucial piece of software that manages all of this? That would be the operating system. The operating system, or OS, is the most important program on your computer. You know it as Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Think of it as the master controller, the bridge between your hardware and your applications. The OS has three main jobs. First, it controls and monitors system activities. Second, it allocates resources like CPU time and memory to the programs that need them. And third, it schedules operations to make sure everything runs efficiently. This is how your computer achieves the magic of multitasking. Multiprogramming lets you run multiple applications at once. Multithreading lets a single application do multiple things at once, like typing in a document while it's saving in the background. And multiprocessing uses multiple CPU cores to run different tasks in true parallel. And that's the big picture. From the physical chips of the hardware, to the high-level languages we use to write instructions, and finally, to the operating system that manages it all. You now have the fundamental knowledge of how a computer truly works. If you are ready to go from learning about code to actually writing it, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss a single step. And if you found this foundational lesson helpful, a quick click on the like button tells YouTube to share it with more people just like you. Ring that notification bell so you're the first to know when the next lesson drops. I'll see you in the code.